Good Sunday morning, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. We've got, again, a fairly quiet start to the morning. We do have some problems out there with patchy fog and also some other problems with fog, freezing fog. The temperatures are just low enough to where some of those fog water droplets could be settling on parts of the roadway, and we could be looking at slick bridges and overpasses. We could also be experiencing the possibility of black ice. That's where the roadway in front of you looks absolutely normal, but as you start traveling over a bridge or an overpass or even a stretch of roadway that's been chilled down long enough, it'll be completely and totally frozen over, and that could lead to a lot of long, boring conversations with your insurance agent. So again, something to think about. Definitely want to slow it down out there for this morning until that fog begins to lift. Most of the dense fog advisories should be over with within about, again, the course of about the next hour or so, but still, again, an idea to make certain you take it as easy as possible. Welcome to our our video weather blog, Weather Overtime. It is Sunday morning. We just wrapped up daybreak. CBS Sunday morning is on at this time. Please drop your location. Let's see where you're checking in from, whether it's in the Mid-South or from out of town. We get a lot of visitors from around the area. Got a couple people from uh, Tacoma, Washington, Albuquerque, New Mexico, uh, wherever you're checking in from, Navarre Beach, Florida, as I recall from yesterday. Don't recall the names. Uh, apologies for that, but the coffee hasn't totally kicked in yet for right now, so thank you very much uh, for everybody who's checking in, but please let us know where you're from, and if you have any weather reports, give us a temperature reading if you got one, or a report on what's going on, and if you've got pictures, weather pictures, we'd love to see them. We'll show you some of the pictures that have been sent in to us, and we'd love to see more of them, so please let us know more about what you're seeing out there as we go throughout the course of the next several days. We'd love to get those going on. Let's take a look around the area for this morning and show you what's happening. Again, not that much going on in the way of fog around Germantown. Poplar Pike in Germantown, the towers of Poplar Poplar and Mendenhall, decently visible. Fog a little hazy this morning, but that fog is burned off around Germantown, 41 degrees. Winds a little breezy out of the southeast at about 12 miles per hour at City Hall. Downtown Memphis, a lot more sunshine than we saw yesterday. A lot of fog in the Mississippi Channel into overnight, but otherwise not doing too bad at this time. Likewise, not bad into and around the area of our tower cam. It's kind of difficult to show with the sunlight going directly into the camera lens, but there was a halo, a ring around the sun that we saw just a little while ago. You can kind of see some fading effects of that with that bright light right there on the side at this time. This is, again, a live shot view, again, from our tower cam. We'll see if we can post a picture of this, maybe enhance it so you can kind of see that ring out there. That's an atmospheric optic effect. The ice crystals acting as tiny little prisms, and that's what's causing the brighter clouds to show up over here. The clouds were overspread across the area. We would see a complete ring or some sun dogs on either side, some bright spots out there. So with the clouds, the proper height and the sunshine coming through there, keep your eyes on the clouds today because you may see more of those sun dogs or some more halos taking place depending on how things go. So keep an eye on that. Fog totally socked in in West Memphis, Arkansas earlier this morning. Right now the fog is starting to lift clouds and a few jet contrails overhead, but otherwise not doing too bad, and temperatures on the rise back in the mid to upper 30s at this point in time. Now, fog as of right now, again, just about seven minutes past eight o'clock, we are seeing some visibility problems along and north of I-40. Visibility from Dyersburg down to Forest City. Boot Heel, Southeast Missouri, Northeast Arkansas, West Tennessee, that's where we're seeing the worst of the worst. Not that bad in Northern Mississippi or Southeast Arkansas, and right along the Tennessee-Mississippi state line, Southwest Tennessee, not totally terrible. A little bit of haze out into and around the area for uh, right now. Thanks to everybody else for checking in this morning. Barbarella Vining from Coffeyville, Mississippi. Thank you for joining us. Sharon Crowell, 36 degrees, th uh, foggy. Uh, that location, uh, Cordova, Terry Al Edwards Alexander, thanks for checking on in. Dense fog finally gone. Uh, beautiful sunshine in Bradford. Joyce Austin, Austin Hudkins, thank you very much uh, for checking on in for this morning. And thanks to everybody else for checking in from across much of the rest of the Mid-South out there so far. So thanks a lot for tuning in to the broadcast for right now. Here's what we're looking at for the main problem, again, with the temperatures across the Mid-South. WeatherNet 3, we were just down around freezing in many locations in the Mid-South this morning. 
Temperatures, thanks to that sunshine you saw out there, warming the lower layer of the atmosphere up. So that's going to kind of help to stir the atmosphere around. You need a decently calm atmosphere, lots of humidity, lots of cool temperatures, and not much wind. That's a pretty good recipe for fog, and that's exactly what we had for this morning. But temperatures around freezing, that's a bad combination because that moisture from that fog can settle onto roadway surfaces, which is why the National Weather Service issued this early this morning, a dense fog advisory for parts of the area in gray and a freezing fog advisory which was issued earlier for northwest Tennessee and northeast Arkansas to cut off all those people who are going to start shouting in the comments section about this being fake or we just made this up to get viewers angry so we could tell how many people watch our shows no none of that is true this is an actual advisory. You can check with the National Weather Service. They came up with it. They issued it. And again, about six years ago, started using it. So again, if you think that this is fake weather, you got another, another thing coming. Just trying to silence the critics on that one for right now. And yes, I have had conversations like that before regarding this particular issuance. So this is a real advisory. It is meaning danger for travelers out there anywhere in these counties. So if you're heading out the door pretty soon before the temperatures rise a little bit farther, right after about, say, 9 o'clock or so, you could get into a major accident going too fast, especially on exposed roadways that don't have the earth underneath them, bridges and overpasses, black ice. The roadway looks exactly the same as normal, but as soon as you hit that roadway, you go out of control because you do not have the traction as per usual, and it doesn't take much to cause problems. So again, in these areas here, this is going to be the worst of the worst, at least within about the next 45 to 50 minutes or so before the temperatures rise on upwards. Now getting into this rest of the day, not seeing any rain Yet, we will see more chances of rain as we get into and around the area of, say, late this afternoon. And we'll take a look at that on the seven-day forecast again coming up here in just a little bit. Teandra Brown, how will the weather be in Independence, Louisiana today? Uh, never been there before. We'll have to take a look at that coming up a little bit later on. If you could uh, give me an idea as to location nearby large city, we can probably give you a better idea as well. We can see there Eileen Blockland, hope I'm saying that right. Sorry for leaning in on this, but uh, two-point typeface and bifocals just really don't mix too well together. Jerry Ross Umfress, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Pamela Gates Winter from Hernando, thanks for joining us. And good morning to Sharon Barber. Thank you very much uh, for checking on in. Rest of the morning, winds are out of the northeast this morning. They will be, again, dropping on down to the southeast. And that's important because it's going to be changing our forecast dynamics. We've already kind of hit our low temperatures for the day. From here on out, and especially this evening, temperatures will be quite mild into this afternoon. We'll also see some spotty rain showers developing late this afternoon, sticking around through about dinner time tonight, and then by News Channel 3 at 10, whoosh, they're all gone. There's not much left of that. But then afterwards, as we get into very early Monday morning, more chances of rainfall come on through because of these southerly winds. You're going to go to bed tonight, probably after about, say, News Channel 3 at 10, it's going to be Decently mild temperatures probably back in, say, the 50s. And then when you get up tomorrow morning, temperatures will be warmer than what they are for tonight. The low temperatures, again, have already been set for today. We go back upwards on the temperatures throughout the next several hours, including overnight tonight. You would think the temperatures would drop a little bit. But in this case, a warm front is coming through, and it's going to be bringing a lot of very warm air into the Mid-South as we get into tomorrow morning. So lots of very warm air bumping the numbers up overnight and this is what it's going to feel like mid 60s by the time you get going early on president's day if you don't have the holiday off if you're back to work or school it's going to be a very mild and unfortunately possibly rainy start to areas along and north of i-40 so for today a little bit milder few showers in the afternoon that's going to be about it at this time Richard Hargrit, Paris, Tennessee, sunny. Thank you very much. Janet Jackson, back to Memphis from Youngstown, Ohio. Safe travels. Thanks a lot for checking in uh, for this morning, and thanks to everybody else for checking in on the show so far. Delvon Twin Jenkins from Horn Lake, Mississippi. Uh, thank you very much for checking on in for right now. Grand Prairie, Texas. Angela Renee Whitney. Thank you very much. 
uh, for checking in from the Lone Star State from this morning. Here's what it looks like again into the rest of the week. If this is too cool for you, how about this? Mid-70s for Monday with, again, mostly cloudy skies, a few showers in the morning, but otherwise mostly to partly cloudy skies throughout the rest of the day. Showers off and on throughout the rest of Tuesday afternoon and late Tuesday afternoon, evening into Wednesday. Could be the possibility of some thunderstorms, but as of right now, we do not see anything on the forecast where it comes to severe weather. That could change. Hasn't yet, but it could change. So again, from Tuesday night into Wednesday, please keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for more on that. And we'll keep you advised as to what we may be seeing out there throughout the course of the rest of the next couple of days. Now, cooling off a bit, some showers and thunderstorms on Wednesday, maybe some leftover rain and thunder by Thursday, drying out a little bit as we go toward Friday and Saturday, and then nicer conditions as we get toward the end of February, the early part of March. Temperatures are gonna, again going to be going back into the mid-50s by next Tuesday. So decently mild out there. The one thing that you're going to be seeing from this forecast is no winter weather. So for those of you who have been ready for springtime, very vocal about that, cool. you got no problems at all with this. Lots of very warm conditions out across the Mid-South into the course of the next several days. Matter of fact, some of the coolest numbers out there are going to be in the low 40s early Thursday morning. And again, as we go toward next, next Tuesday. Lower 40s are about as good as it gets, so no winter weather showing up in this forecast anytime soon. So if you have any plans for travel, again, this is going to be the main concern out there. And especially Tuesday night into Wednesday, this is where I would be watching with a lot more interest to see what goes on out there when it comes to severe weather. Again, nothing right now. Just want to make certain that everybody's paying attention to that. That's going to be an important thing out there for the next couple of days. Thank you, my co-anchor, for taking a great picture of the monitor, taking a picture of the Mississippi River from our tower cam from yesterday morning's uh, shot over the Mississippi River. James R. Gulledge, frequent contributor from around Humboldt, Tennessee. Thank you, Mr. Gulledge, for a kind of rainy shot from around Humboldt. And a beautiful end to Saturday, Louis Haskett from around northeast Arkansas. Thank you very much for, again, a very nice view to wrap up Saturday evening out into around the area. If you've got pictures, these people that I just featured are frequent contributors. We'd love to have your pictures out there and show them off in front of everybody, either on air with our broadcast or here on our netcast. And in order to do that, all you have to do is just send them along to me, Aonic underscore WREG3 on Twitter, Aonic no underscore necessary, WREG3 on Instagram, and of course on my Facebook page, you can join me there. We'll feature them on air, we'll give you full credit, but we can't show them if you don't send them. So again, if you could do us a favor and send along a few extra pictures every once in a while that'd be great because otherwise we have to just recycle the old ones and that really gets kind of boring after a while so just please consider that if at all possible coming up in the next few weeks we've got numerous severe weather spotter training course meetings coming up if you'd like to volunteer and i urge you to do so the more spotters we have around the mid-south the better off we are all going to be protected because the more people that can look and watch and see what goes on are more people that can help keep everybody else safe. You might be in Olive Branch and you see a storm passing overhead and moving to the northeast. You can tell people up around Mineral Wells or Collierville or Germantown or southwest Fayette County that that storm is moving in that general area. Your information could help save lives. What to look for? how to spot for stuff like this. The National Weather Service teaches these meetings over the course of the spring and into the fall semesters. So if you'd like to know more about where these are going to be, what time to show up, all you have to do is show up and take the course. That's it. You don't have to pay for anything, no registration. Hour and a half out of your time at maximum. Great opportunity to learn more. And again, we'll feature more of these coming up. If you'd like more information about these meetings, head to this website, wreg.com slash weather. Scroll down beneath the forecast and a link to the National Weather Service is waiting there for you. Tons of information about how you can contact the people organizing the meetings if you have questions. So it's all there for you. Please consider becoming a volunteer spotter. We need more spotters to make certain we all stay safe. So again, please 
think about that if at all possible. Uh, Martha Tinsley Atoka, good morning. Phyllis Ridley from Lakeview Gardens, thank you very much. Jeff Frog Wheeler, good to see the sun, even if it is just for a short time. Right now, we'll take all the sunshine we can get, uh, considering all the clouds and the rainfall we've had. If you'd like more forecasts, but you're out and about today and want to see what's going on, dial us up on the radio, Oldies 102.3 and Country 92.5, and join me Monday through Friday on AM 730. Bob and Josh talk back live on Yahoo Sports Radio, 8 to 10 a.m. If you can't catch their signal in and around the Mid-South, join them on their website, and you can listen through the website at talkbacklivenetwork.org. Apparently, a very big announcement or a semi-explosive show is going to be coming up as we go into Tuesday, so looking forward to that. Follow them on Twitter, at Talkback Live, if you'd like to find out more about what's going on there. That'll do it for this edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. We'll be on again tonight at 5 and 10, depending on how long golf and other sports go on CBS Sports, so stay tuned for more there. Kristen Holloway will have all the day's news. Mike Sadie's got the busy day in sports, and of course we'll talk more about what the rest of the week is going to look like where it comes to those really warm temperatures and, of course, for the possibility of thunderstorms coming up a little bit later on this week. So stay tuned for more there. And we'll do another weather overtime sometime tonight. So stick around for that at wreg.com slash weather. And, of course, on all my social media networks as well. You can find me out there someplace. I'll be around at various locations. As soon as I figure out how to get it on the Game Boy Network, I will let you know about that too. Stick around for more. Live and direct, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. Stick around for more with News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the weekend on air and online.